this is a lock. This is a castle. And this is a very grammable Highland scene. But could it be more than it seems? Bigfoot, the abominable snowman, the beast of Bodman, we all love a monster. Especially one that might have the slightest ring of truth about it. If it could just possibly exist, might not actually be a monster after all, but just misunderstood. We're hooked, like dogs eating beetroot. But there's one monster in particular that's heavily associated with this part of the world. Welcome to Scotland Unplugged and the story of the Loch Ness Monster. This is Glen Moore, the Great Glen. It cuts across Scotland like a war wound, bisecting the southeast and northwest highlands along a geological fault line. It carves the way for the A82 road and the Caledonian Canal, a canal connected by lochs. This is Loch Ness. It's 22 and a half miles long, 226 meters deep, and contains more water than all the lakes of England and Wales combined. These are children. These ones are on holiday at the moment, and they say that the thing that's really wrong with my channel is that I haven't been monster hunting yet. So, uh, here goes. This is Urquhart Castle, near the village of Drumna Drockett. Possibly the most Scottish sounding place name ever. Although that could be Ochter Muckdy. The castle undoubtedly gives the best known view of the loch. It's the one on all the postcards. The one that appeared in Outlander where Claire saw the water horse, apparently. Like a lot of people in Scotland, I haven't actually seen Outlander yet. The first known version of the Loch Ness Monster dates back to the Picts, a people who we don't actually know very much about. Other than the fact they were painted, the term Pict is thought to come from the Latin Picti, meaning painted. Some of what we do know comes from stone carvings they left behind in the area, like this one found in a byre in Glen Urquhart, depicting a strange serpent-like creature. I mean, it could also be a serpent. We do have a few of those as well. The monster first appears in written form as part of a 7th century written biography of St Columba by a Domnan, the abbot of Iona Abbey. Columba is held up as a warrior saint, a super evangelist who brought Christianity to Scotland. That's not quite true. Originally he was from Ireland. He was on a mission to convert people to Christianity and he had the Picts firmly in his sights. The thing is, this place wasn't really Scotland then. Scotland didn't exist. It was a group of desperate peoples. And the Gaels had already started to embrace Christianity. We think Columba was likely here at Urquhart Castle. The story goes that he converted a Pict who was on his deathbed, and it's thought that could have been the site of this castle. Not this version of the castle, it dates back to between the 13th and the 16th century. According to the story, in 565 AD, Columba saw a funeral by the River Ness. Then he asked the locals about it. They told him a monster had eaten a swimmer in the loch. Never one to miss an opportunity for a high-risk PR strategy, Columba sent one of his followers out into the loch. The monster predictably rocked up with breakfast in mind. Fair play, really. I mean, if something appears in your larder, it's kind of yours. Columba got someone to hold his coat and got stuck in. He made the sign of the cross and ordered the beast to go no further. Do not touch the man. Go back at once. Legend has it that the monster stopped as if pulled back by ropes. Over the centuries there have been a few sightings and then in 1933 things seem to have revved up a bit. The first widely publicised sighting was by Aldi Mackay and her husband John. On the 15th of April, as they drove along the A82, they spotted something. The Loch Ness water bailiff and part-time journalist Alex Campbell wrote the story up in an article published in the Inverness Courier on the 2nd of May. The creature disported itself, rolling and plunging for fully a minute, its body resembling that of a whale 
and the water cascading and churning like a simmering cauldron. Soon, however, it disappeared in a boiling mass of foam. Both onlookers confessed that there was something uncanny about the whole thing, for they realised that here was no ordinary denizen of the depths, because apart from its enormous size, the beast, in taking the plunge, sent out waves that were big enough to have been caused by a passing steamer. Then, on the 22nd of July, George Spicer and his wife, driving along the same road, spotted what he described as the nearest approach to a dragon or prehistoric animal that I have ever seen in my life. By December, the Daily Mail had commissioned the big game hunter and sometime actor Marmaduke Weatherall to seek out the beast. Monster fever had arrived. Marmaduke reported finding large footprints along the loch shore that likely belonged to a soft-footed animal about 20 feet long. Zoologists from the Natural History Museum were quick to investigate and after getting hold of some plaster casts found that the footprints were identical and probably made using an umbrella stand that had a hippopotamus's foot as its base. So unless the monster was hopping or had four front left feet, well case closed. You might think things were only getting started. Around that time the road on the north side of the lock was upgraded and it's thought that might have brought more people into the area. It also gave a much better view of the north side of the lock. It was kind of a perfect monster storm. In 1934 gynaecologist Robert Kenneth Wilson claimed to have taken what would turn out to be the most famous photograph of the monster. It became known as the surgeon's photograph, mainly because Wilson didn't want to be associated with it. He said he'd been looking at the lock, minding his own business. Then he saw the creature, ran back to his car, grabbed his camera and took four pictures. The famous one appears to show a small head and a long neck. The Daily Mail printed the picture and it caused a bit of a sensation. Speculation was rife, with people saying it was probably a plesiosaur, a marine creature thought to have been extinct for 65 and a half million years. Down the years, this place has attracted a lot of monster hunters and it spawned a mini industry with films, soft toys, and the monster now known as Nessie then being thought of as cute. In fact, he, she, they, there must be more than one of them, are thought to contribute about £70 million to the Scottish economy each year. People really take this seriously, and not just for monetary reasons. There have been big sonar expeditions in 1987 and 2003, both of which I remember seeing on the news. There is an elephant, or maybe a hippo, in the room though. In 1994, it was finally revealed that Dr. Wilson's photo wasn't actually Dr. Wilson's photo. It was, in fact, a hoax, put together by a decidedly vengeful Marmaduke Weatherall. I keep picturing him being unmasked by the kids from Scooby-Doo. Weatherall, angry at being publicly ridiculed by the Daily Mail and accused of fakery, concocted an elaborate charade using a toy submarine from Woolworths and some wood putty. Weatherall's stepson was a sculptor, and Marmaduke and his other son took the pictures. Then a co-conspirator, Morris Chambers, an insurance salesman, gave the photographic plates to his friend Dr Wilson, who apparently loved a good practical joke, and took them to a chemist in Inverness to have them developed. He sold them to the Daily Mail for £100, but got fined by the British Medical Association for a breach of professional ethics for being associated with the whole thing. The truth really came out in the 90s, when the details of the hoax were published after Morris Chambers' papers were found following his death in 1994. Saying that, an article declaring it to be a scam had been published in the Sunday Telegraph in 1975, but largely ignored. The sculptor, Christian Sperling, confirmed the story shortly before his death in 1993. There have been numerous sightings and photographs, even films over the years, none of which are, for some reason, ever very clear. 
The sightings have been dismissed as seals, catfish, dogs with sticks, even a Greenland shark. None of the fakery has stopped scientific expeditions though. In 2018, researchers studied the loch, taking DNA samples. They didn't find any samples of plesiosaurs, but they did find a lot of eel species, leading some to believe that Nessie could be a giant eel. The sightings continue. Three so far this year, including one last week, where some footage was captured by a man watching a webcam in Ireland. The hunt for the truth goes on. And let's face it, it's a lot more fun than knowing the truth.